The closest planet to the sun is Mercury, a rocky, desolate planet covered in craters with a heart of iron, literally. It's the closest planet to the sun, and as you might guess, it's pretty toasty. Earth sits 93 million miles away from the sun, but Mercury orbits 29 million miles away from the sun. Wait, 36 million miles. Wait, 43 million miles. What is going on here? Well, as we are about to learn, Mercury is doing a bit of a dance. Humans have known about the planet Mercury since the ancient times, at least 5,000 years. You can see it with the naked eye. It orbits so quickly around the sun that the ancient civilizations actually thought it was two different stars, since it often appears twice in the same night, often at sunrise and again at sunset. It's named after the Roman god Mercury, the messenger of the gods, because it moves across the sky faster than any other planet. The reason for that is that Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, about a third the distance of us. As you might imagine, being so close to the sun is tough on a little planet. Mercury gets extremely hot. At its hottest, the surface of Mercury can reach 840 degrees. But even though it's the closest to the sun, it's not the warmest planet. That award goes to the hellish planet Venus, which we'll talk about later. Because Mercury has almost no atmosphere to trap any heat, at night, the temperatures plummet down to minus 275 degrees. That means in a single day on Mercury, the temperature can vary by 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. But when we talk about a day or a year on Mercury, things get even weirder. So weird, in fact, that we need to define what we even mean by the word day. There are actually two ways you can define a day, a solar day and a sidereal day. A solar day is the time it takes for a planet to rotate so that the sun appears in the same position in the sky. It's the main way that we keep time here on Earth and what we think of as being 24 hours long. On Mercury, if you stay in the same spot, it would take two Mercury years, or 176 days, for the sun to appear in the same spot in the sky. That's its solar day. A sidereal day is the time it takes for a planet to spin around one time. On Earth, the difference between a solar day and a sidereal day is pretty small, about four minutes. That's why this is probably the first time you've heard those terms, because on Earth, a day is a day. But on Mercury, there is a huge difference between a solar day and a sidereal day. It's sidereal day, how long it takes to spin around one time, is 59 Earth days. If that's hard to understand, hang with me, I think it'll become clearer. Most planets in our solar system have circular orbits, but Mercury has an elliptical orbit, meaning it moves closer and farther away from the sun. At its closest, or perihelion, Mercury is 29 million miles away from the Sun. And at its furthest, or aphelion, it's 43 million miles away. In an elliptical orbit like this, as you move away from the Sun, you slow down. And as you move toward the Sun, you speed up. As this happens, Mercury's spin, its sidereal day, it's constant. Mercury's spin does not speed up or slow down. But its orbit around the Sun, which affects the solar day, changes all the time. And that makes something really weird happen on Mercury. At perihelion, when Mercury is the closest to the Sun, Mercury's orbit around the Sun is so fast that it's actually faster than the spin of the planet. That means if you were standing on Mercury, the Sun would appear to slow down and then stop in the sky. What? Then the Sun would appear to move backwards across the sky for a few Earth days. Backwards! Whew, that's a lot. So here are some bullet points. Mercury's orbit is highly elliptical. Its year is 88 Earth days. Its solar day is 176 Earth days. And its sidereal day is 59 Earth days. Other than its long, very strange days, living on Mercury would be similar to living on our moon. At about 3,000 miles in diameter, it's just a little bigger than the moon, but it's a lot more dense. In fact, it's the second densest planet in the solar system after Earth. Remember how I said that Mercury has a heart of iron? I wasn't kidding. It has a massive solid and liquid iron core that takes up 85% of the planet. This means that although Mercury is just a little bit bigger than our moon, its gravity is actually as strong as the planet Mars, which is twice Mercury's size. So if you weigh about 100 pounds on Earth, you would weigh 38 pounds on Mercury. That would make dunking a basketball fairly easy, but the weaker gravity does have some downsides. I mentioned solar wind in our episode about the sun. The sun launches massive amounts of high energy particles into the solar system every second, and Mercury is so close that it gets it at full blast. With a weak magnetic field of just 1% of Earth's and weak gravity, Mercury cannot hold on to an atmosphere. It's just blown away by the sun. So because there's no atmosphere to protect itself, Mercury has been pelted by meteorites, and its surface is covered with craters. 
Compared to the other planets, Mercury is really difficult to explore, and that's again because of the Sun. As a spacecraft journeyed towards Mercury, it's pulled by the Sun's massive gravity and sped up a lot. Since Mercury's gravity is fairly weak and there's no atmosphere, a spacecraft just can't slow down when it arrives at Mercury, and it would normally just whiz on by at a high speed. So Mercury has only been explored by two spacecraft, Mariner 10 and Messenger. But a new spacecraft is on its way right now, the whimsically named Bepi Colombo, a European and Japanese spacecraft that was launched in 2018, and it will arrive at Mercury seven years later in December of 2025. So there you have it. Although it may seem like a boring, rocky planet, the first planet in our solar system has a lot of character and quirks.